Hi, welcome back to AT Math. Today, 11.8, multiplying and dividing radical expressions. Now, really, this is not much harder than multiplying itself. Take a look. If they say, for instance, we're going to multiply, write each product in simplest form. So square root of 3, square root of 6. Remember, it means square root of 3 times square root of 6. So you can go ahead and just take 3 times 6 and make 18. And then bust 18 down into a 9 and a 2. Remember, it means square root of 9 and square root of 2. Square root of 9 becomes a 3. Square root of 2 just stays where it is. So it's 3 square root of 2. Or you can take square root of 3. And when you times square root of 6, you can take square root of 3 times square root of 2. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 makes it regular 3. And square root of 2 stays by itself. So either way, <clears throat> you got the same thing. Now take a look at this. 5 square root of 3 square. Mm -hmm. 5 square root of 3 times another 5 square root of 3. Remember, there's three steps. Positive times positive. Uh, coefficient times coefficient. And then you're going to take the root times the root. So positive times positive is a positive. 5 times 5 is 25. Root of 3 times root of 3 makes a positive 3. So you have a 25. And basically root of 9 or square root of 3 times square root of 3 makes a whole 3. Either way, you get 75. Now, 2 square root of 8x times square root of 4x, I would times everything on the inside first. Well, all right. So 8x times 4x is 32x. Now, 32 can break down to a 16 and a 2. And x squared, if you root x squared, it's going to become a whole x. That's going to kick it all the way out to the side. Uh, square root of 16 becomes a 4, so 4 goes on the outside as well. So you have a 2, you have a 4, you have an x. 2 times 4 is 8, meets the x, so you have 8x. And what's left inside is a 2. But there's more than one way to do this. There's not a wrong way. You could take square root of 8x and make square root of 4x and square root of 2. Remember, you have another square root of 4x right here. Well, 4x and 4x match up, so they can become a whole 4x on the outside and 4x meets with the 2. 2 times 4x is 8x. And the root of 2 stays inside. So either way, you get 8x square root of 2. So again, you decide on the how, because it's all going to work out the same. Now, using distributive properties. So let's take square root of 2 times 5 plus square root of 12. Well, all right. Square root of 2 times 5 is square root of 2 times 5. And square root of 2 times square root of 12 is going to be 2 times 12, but still under the square root. So 5 square root of 2, well, that's just nothing to do with that. It's just that's there. However, 2 times 12 is 24. When you split 24 up into a 4 and a 6, root of 4 is 2. Therefore, square root of 6. Remember, you might think square root of 6, can I break it down somehow? Not really, because it's a 2 and a 3, so it's basically stuck. So you have 5 square root of 2 and 2 square root of 6, and since they don't match up, there's nothing else to be done. Take a look at this one. Root of 3 times root of 3 minus root of 5. Well, root of 3 times root of 3 makes a whole 3. Root of 9, which makes a whole 3. And root of 3 times 5, root of 5 is uh, square root of 15. And there's nowhere for it to go, so it's going to stay that way. So you have 3 minus square root of 15. But now, if you have 4 plus square root of 5 times 3 minus square root of 5, you have 4 times 3, which makes 12. 4 times negative square root of 5, which is negative 4 square root of 5. Square root of 5 times 3 is 3 square root of 5. And square root of 5 times square root of 5 is going to actually make a, a whole 5, because a root times a root makes a whole. So you have that. And now you have a positive 12 and a minus 5, which is going to make 7. And negative 4 square root of 5 plus 3 square root of 5. Negative 4 plus 3 is going to be negative 1 square root of 5. Or if you prefer, you can just have negative square root of 5, because negative 1 Square root of 5 is the same as just saying negative square root of 5. So whatever makes you happy. Either way. 3 minus 1 square root of 5 or 3 minus square root of 5. <clears throat> you try. Go ahead. Let's see how you did. If you notice here, you have 8 times 2, which is 16. 8 times negative 3 square root of 5 is going to be negative 24 square root of 5. Square root of 5 times 2 is 2 square root of 5. And square root of 5 times negative 3 square root of 5. Now here you still have the minus 3. But then square root of 5 times square root of 5 is going to make a whole 5. So this is going to make 15, because 3 times 5 is 15. So positive 16 minus 15 will make 1. 
and negative, and negative 24 square root of 5s plus positive 2 square root of 5s will be negative 22 square root of 5s. So 1 minus 22 square root of 5. And there you have that. And 8 plus square root of 5 squared means 8 plus square root of 5 times 8 plus square root of 5. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times square root of 5 here. 8 times square root of 5 here. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is positive 5. 64 plus 5 is 71. A square root of 5 plus another A square root of 5. 8 square root of 5 is going to be 16 square root of 5. Nothing more to be done. This is your finished product. Now, square root of 7 over square root of 2. Well, remember we have to get rid of the root at the bottom. To get rid of square root of 2, we're going to go ahead and multiply it by square root of 2. Square root of 2 in the bottom and on the top. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 makes positive 2. Square root of 7 times square root of 2 makes square root of 14, which is fine because the root can be on the top, just not at the bottom. And square root of 7 times square root of 8n. There's two ways you could do it. Yes, you can multiply both by 8n, but you don't have to because there's an easier way. First, we're going to break this down into 8n breaks down into a 4 and a 2n. Now, why do that? Because square root of 4 becomes a positive 2, like this. And square root of 2n times square root of 2n, you're going to have a complete 2n, which comes on the outside. So 2 times 2n is 4n. And then square root of 7 times square root of 2n, and this is supposed to cover the n, by the way, is square root of 14n. And that's what you have there. And we are done. Thanks again. We'll do some work on it in class. Bye.